morning and welcome to celebration service this morning. I want you to just take some time to lift up your hands this morning wherever you are. Give God thanks for the grace to see a beautiful new day. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for the gift of a new day and we ask that you brood over us as we receive your word this morning. Lord, bypass my inadequacies. Speak through me to your people this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. For in Jesus' name we're prayed. Amen. We're in a series themed stewardship. And for a title this morning, I've titled my message, Value for People. Value for People. God has entrusted things in our hands and will account for everything he has entrusted in our hands. Time, money, people, and all other resources. So this morning we'll be talking about people. Amen. Somebody say people matter. Sometimes your encounter with people might be for a brief moment. But the impact, whether good or bad, you have on them might be for a lifetime. We've heard about rulers and leaders who led their different nations for just a short period of time. And years down the line, we still hear about their exploits, both good or bad. Ask yourself this morning, what are you going to be remembered for? Long after you are gone, in the next 50 years, in the next 100 years, how do you treat people around you, your family members, your friends, your colleagues, your business partners? Amen. Sometimes we pray for breakthrough, we pray for God to bless us, but I'm very sure that if God in his awesome glory and power appears in your room right now, you you run. That's why God uses people like you as conduits for blessings. And most times, the people he uses don't look like it. The human connector of Joseph to the king was a butler. He wasn't royalty. He wasn't a minister. He wasn't a special advisor. He was a butler, a servant of the king. But that was a human connector. When they were looking for someone to play good music to the king, King Saul, one of the servants answered and said in 1 Samuel 16, 18, that I have seen a son of Jesse, the Bethlehemite. It wasn't royalty that answered and said he was a servant. It wasn't a minister that answered and said he was a servant. So most times, the people around us who might end up being a conduit of God's blessings might not look like it. It might be people that we will generally despise. God will bring people your way. And your responsibility is to treat them well because you'll give account. To the wives I say, that man in your life is first God's son before your husband. To the men I say, that woman in your life is first God's daughter before your wife. 
to treat them right. As someone who will give account of every relationship, every key relationship in your life. Amen. What I said is hallelujah. So what's the worth of people? What are you worth as a human being? What are you worth as a human being? I want to put it to you this morning that you are worth more than your wardrobe. Your worth is not determined or proportional to the size of your wardrobe or the balance in your account, the cars you drive, the shoes you wear, where you shop or where you hang out. Your value is determined by how much it took to ransom you. And you were not ransomed by gold, silver, or bronze. You were ransomed by something much more expensive, much more rare than all of that. Let's look into the scriptures this morning. I'll read from 1 Peter 1, 18 to 19. I'll read from the New Living Translation. It says, For you know that God paid a ransom to save you from the empty life you inherited from your ancestors. And the ransom he paid was not mere gold or silver. He paid for you with the precious lifeblood of Christ, the sinless, spotless lamb of God. The ransom paid for you and I is not mere gold or silver. The ransom paid for the people in your life is not mere gold or silver. It took royalty. It took the blood of royalty to redeem you. So that's your worth. Tell yourself this morning you are worth much more. So you need to treat people around you with that mindset and with that understanding. So are you a worker? Are you an employer? Are you a businessman? Whoever you are, work with the mindset that you will give account about the people you encounter and what you have done to them and done with them. Beyond our worth as human beings and our values as human beings, it is imperative to say that we are also social beings. How will it feel if you organize a wedding and you are expecting a lot of guests and nobody shows up? How will it feel if you just wake up one morning and you are the only one living in the city where you are at present? God did not create us to be loners. God created us to thrive on fellowship and relationship. So ours is to develop a mindset that nurtures such relationship. Bearing in mind that we'll give account. Amen. So let's quickly look at the don'ts with people. The don'ts with people. Number one, don't bomb bridges or say hurtful words. You know, in the moment when we are angry, we tend to see a lot of things. And the truth is, the wound might heal in a moment, but the scars will remain there for a long time. So we have to be careful about what we say to people when we are angry. I've had people say that I will never talk to you again. We will never meet again. Ephesians 4, 29, the New Living Translation says, don't use foul or abusive language. Let everything you say be good and helpful so that your words will be an encouragement to those who hear them. Proverbs 12, 18, the Good News Bible says, Thoughtless words can wound as deeply as any sword, but wisely spoken words can heal. In this part of the world in Africa, there is a proverb which signifies that once you drop an egg and it breaks, you cannot put it together again. Same thing with words. Once it launches out, you cannot take it back again. So let's briefly look at what we can do to learn to speak wisely. What can we do to learn to speak wisely? James 1.19, the New King James Version says, So then, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. Swift
swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. If you hear swiftly and you internalize what you have heard without rushing to any form of conclusion and without speaking too fast, you will not get angry easily and you will not say things that you didn't mean in the heat of the moment. Proverbs 18, 13, the message transition says, answering before listening is both stupid and rude. So what can we do to learn to speak wisely? Number one, think before you speak. Because you cannot take back what you have said. We emphasize that. Once an egg drops and breaks, you cannot gather the pieces and the bits again. Proverbs 16 verse 23, the message transition says, They make a lot of sense, these wise folks, whenever they speak, their reputation increases. So the wise learn to think before they speak. And when you think before you speak, you make a lot of sense. Your reputation for wisdom increases. You don't jump into any argument without thinking it through. So number one, think before you speak. Especially in this social media age when there is a need to shatter tables, to scatter the table, and to shake the table. Think before you type that comment. Before you send that message. Before you comment on that trending topic on the name of shaking tables or trending or being popular. In this social media age, we don't only think before we speak, we think before we type. Amen. May the Lord give us wisdom. Number two, always ask God to help you guard your tongue. Psalms 141 verse 3, the New King James Version says, Set a guard, O Lord, over my mouth. Keep watch over the door of my lips. I had the story of a man who was discussing with his client on phone. And he was a bit angry, but he did so well not to reveal his emotion on phone. So he ended the call, not knowing that he did not press the end button on his phone. And he was commenting about that client with people around. So that man is a serious man. How can he be talking to me like that? What nonsense. And the man heard. So eventually, the man caught the call on his own hand and called back that, were you talking about me like in that manner with, in the presence of others? So he was unable to breathe his tongue at that point in time. And all the work he did in breathing his tongue during the conversation was not. So we need to ask God to help us guide our tongues when emotions are raging, when we are in the heat of anger, when we are speaking to our spouse. Because what you say is like a seed. It goes into the soil of the earth, it germinates. So many homes today have heavy barriers. Relationships are weakened because of what someone has said in times past. So we need to be very careful. And the Lord will help us. Amen. Number two, the second don't with people. Don't gossip. Hmm. Proverbs 11, 13, I'll read from the message translation. It says, a gad about gossip can't be trusted with a secret. But someone of integrity won't violate a confidence. What is gossip? You gossip when you talk about your friends or people around you, behind them, in a way that cuts them down. So whenever you have that hodge to talk about people around you in a way that cuts them down, think about it. The only time you should be talking about people behind their back is when you are talking to God about them, when you are interceding for them. So you lose people's confidence when you open your mouth and you talk about the things that were spoken to you in confidence. And if you like to talk a lot, you have to ensure that you safeguard your lips. Because the truth is, the day you don't have content to talk about, you start talking about other people. Have you seen people who just mistakenly 
talk about things they were told in confidence. I say, ah. And I say, please, don't, don't tell this person that I told you. I know the way it runs is that the person you just told now will mistakenly tell another person. I say, oh, please, don't tell anybody that I told you. That person, too, in another conversation will say the same thing. I say, oh, please, don't tell anybody that I told you. So it goes on and on and on till everybody hears. So don't do it. When people tell you things in confidence, don't betray their confidence. Don't talk about it to anybody. Amen. Number three, the third don't. Don't manipulate. Jesus said in scriptures, follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. A steward makes a manipulator uses people. So who are you? Do people become better when they meet with you? Or you use them? Don't manipulate people because you have more resources than they have. Then you manipulate them to take decisions they are not willing to take. Amen. So I'll ask you that question again. What do people become when they meet you? Do they become better or do they become bitter? Think about it. Number four. The fourth don't with people. Don't maltreat or oppress people. Ephesians 6, 9, the message translation says, Masters, it's the same with you. No abuse, please, and no threats. You and your servants are both under the same master in heaven. He makes no distinction between you and them. How do you treat your domestic staff? How do you treat your driver? How do you treat the people around you who don't have any form of defense? Don't maltreat people. The Bible gives us two tales. I'll call the first tale Master 1 and the second tale Master 2. For Master 1, let's go to 1 Samuel 39, the New King James Version. It says, so David went, he and the 600 men who were with him, and came to the brook Bessel, where those stayed who were left behind. 10. But David pursued, he and 400 men, for 200 stayed behind, who were so weary that they could not cross the brook vessel. Eleven, then they found an Egyptian in the field and brought him to David. And they gave him bread and he ate. And they let him drink water. Twelve, and they gave him a piece of a cake of figs and two clusters of raisins. So when he had eaten, his strength came back to him. For he had eaten no bread nor drunk water for three days and three nights. Thirteen, then David said to him, to whom do you belong and where are you from? And he said, I am a young man from Egypt. Servant of an Amalekite, and my master left me behind because three days ago I fell sick. What a master. He left that servant behind because he fell sick. He left him to die. Now, let's look at the second master. In Luke chapter 7 verse 1, I'll read from the New King James Version. It says, now when he concluded all his sins in the hearing of the people, he entered Capernaum too. And the certain centurion servant who was there to him was sick and ready to die. Three. So when they heard about Jesus, he sent elders of the Jews to him, pleading with him to come and heal his servant. And when they had come to Jesus, they begged him earnestly, saying that the one for whom he should do this was the servant. Five. For he loves our nation and has built us a synagogue. Six. Then Jesus went with them, and when he was already not far from the house, the centurion sent friends to him, saying to him, Lord, do not trouble yourself. For I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Seven, therefore I did not even think myself worthy to come to you. But say the word, and my servant will be healed. Eight, for I also am a man placed under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to one, go, and he goes. And to another, come, and he comes. And to my servant, do this, and he does it. Nine, when Jesus heard these things, he marveled at him and turned around and said to the crowd that followed him, I said to you, I have not found such great faith, not even in Israel. Ten, and those who were sent, returning to the house, found the servant well, who had been sick. The first master left his servant to die. And was rescued by David and his men after three days. The second master did everything. He went all the way. 
to ensure that his servant was whole. I ask you again, which master are you? Or which master would you like to be? Amen. So how do you treat your domestic servants? How do you treat your workers? How do you treat your friends? Are you one to abandon people when they're in need? Or are you one to go the mile after the extra to see that they are whole again? To see that their needs are met? Amen. So let's quickly look at tips for enhancing value for people. Number one, celebrate people. Who doesn't like to be celebrated here? Look at your friends, look at your wife, look at your husband and say, I appreciate you. I thank you for all what you have been doing. When you appreciate people, their value appreciates. So to enhance value for people, appreciate people. Say thank you. Say thank you. Tell them how, how kind they've been, how helpful they've been. Amen. Number two, invest in the growth of people. Invest your money, invest your time in the growth of others. Who are you mentoring? Who are you giving your time to this week? Who are you sharing insight with? Who are you sharing ideas with? Who are you giving to this week? Is there somebody in your neighborhood who is in need? Is there somebody in your family who is in need? Is there a friend who is in need of just someone to talk to? You can give a listening here. You can share something. You can share your meal. You can share your resources. So to invest in the growth of other people. The Bible records David and his mighty men. I would highlight some of the strength of this man. The first is Adino, a man who killed 800 men in battle was a courageous man who didn't give up. That's in 2 Samuel 23, 8. You might read that reference up. 2 Samuel 23, 8. The second man is Eliezer, a man with a sword. That's 2 Samuel 23, 9 to 10. The third is Shama. He's regarded as a man who stood when others fled. You can read that up in 2 Samuel 23, 11 to 12. But these men were not always brilliant men. At a point in their lives, they were depressed. Let's look at 1 Samuel 22, verse 1. The New King James Version says, David therefore departed from there and escaped to the cave of Adullam. And when his brothers and all his father's house heard it, they went down there to him too. And everyone who was in distress, underline that everyone who was in distress, everyone who was in debt, and everyone who was discontented gathered to him. So he became captain over them. And there were about 400 men with him. So David became captain over the debtors, the people who were regarded as miscreants in society. And out of these men, out of the depressed, out of the oppressed, out of people who were in debt, came the mighty men of David. So you need to be able to recognize value in people. So the disciples of Jesus were regular people who were not qualified to be the rabbis of that day. As we walk with people, as we walk with people, we need to be able to recognize value in people. So what do people become when they meet you? Do they become better? Do they become bitter? It's in your hands. It's in your hands to be a good steward of the resource called people that God has placed around you. And I pray that the Lord will give you the gift of men and men that are gifts and give you the wisdom to be able to manage the relationships in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. It's time to give this morning and the details will come up on the screen right now as we pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the grace to give this morning out of the abundance you have given to us. We give to you as a mark of love, as a mark of honor, and in partnership with your purpose and your agenda here upon the earth. We ask, Lord, that you receive our offerings, our tithes, and our gifts this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. We ask that you meet every need 
and bless every giver. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Thank you for tuning in this morning. Don't go yet. Stay tuned for the announcement. God bless you. God keep you. And make his face to shine upon you. Amen. Good morning. It's great to have you in celebration service. Welcome to Prayer on Radio. My name is Wale Adeyemo. Prayer on Radio will be live tomorrow on Diamond 101.1 FM, Ibadan, from 8.30 to 8.40 a.m. You can stream live via the link on your screen. Don't miss tuning to God's channel this Wednesday as we worship, fellowship, and study the Word of God. Time is 6.30 to 7.30 p.m. For the benefit of our guests, Teens to God's channel is our midweek event which holds here every Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. Small group meetings are scheduled to hold this weekend. If you do not belong to any small group, please visit the link on your screen to sign up. The Foundation's meetings are scheduled to hold on Friday, 25th September and Saturday, 26th September. Time is 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. on Friday and 5.30 to 6.30 p.m. on Saturday. Please note that all workers are expected to be at this meeting. Do you want to become a member of the Pentecost House? The next membership class is scheduled to hold today at 12 noon. Thank you for viewing this announcement. Do catch up with us throughout the week on social media. Have an amazing week and God bless you.